In this video, we are going to see the next property set proof that is proof secant inverse x plus cosecant inverse x is equal to pi by 2. For all, x belongs to minus infinity to minus 1 union 1 to infinity. Now, I know that from the previous videos and from the previous understanding of these reciprocal relations in the form of addition or related relations in the form of addition that for proving, I have two main important steps. The first would be having the concept of range and domain in my mind and the second applying it. So let's get started with the proof. Let secant inverse x is equal to theta is my first step. Now I have secant x is equal to theta. So it is secant x is equal to theta. Now this step of secant x is equal to theta is not of any use if I don't know what is the interval in which theta lies. So I know that theta lies in minus pi by 2 to pi by 2 for sine and cos questions but here it is secant and cosecant. So theta lies in between what range theta is actually a member of 0 to pi range. So my theta lies in 0 to pi and theta should never be equal to pi by 2. Why it should not be equal to pi by 2? Because I know that cos pi by 2 is 0 and 1 upon cos is sec, 1 upon 0 is not defined. So I know about theta. What about minus theta? If I have minus theta, things would change. Minus 0 is 0 only, but minus pi, it is different. So I have minus pi, minus theta, and something called as 0, wherein theta is again not equal to pi by 2. You are getting this thing in mind? Now, minus pi minus theta 0. What if I would like to add or subtract pi by 2? So, I change my question a bit. I am basically doing what? I am basically adding pi by 2 to everything. So, pi by 2 to minus pi pi by 2 minus theta and 0 plus pi by 2. Pi by 2 minus pi is what? It is minus pi by 2. Pi by 2 minus theta, pi by 2 minus theta and 0 plus pi by 2 is pi by 2. Things should be kept in a big bracket. Things are kept in a big bracket in a box to refer to them later on. Pi by 2 minus theta range is found out, interval is found out. What is the next step? The next step is to revert back to the step wherein I assumed secant inverse x is equal to theta and put it as equation number 1. Now, if secant x is equal to theta or secant inverse x is equal to theta, what changes can I expect? I can expect secant x to be written as cosecant 90 minus theta. Secant x is equal to cosecant 90 minus theta where x is equal to secant theta. There is some change in this step which we didn't notice earlier. I know that secant inverse x is equal to theta. So x is equal to secant theta. Now this step can be written cosecant 90 minus theta. Now Observe from these two things that x is equal to cosecant 90 minus theta. That means what? That means cosecant inverse x is equal to cosecant inverse x is equal to what? It is equal to 90 minus theta. Now what about theta from 1? I have secant inverse x is equal to theta. So I put the value cosecant inverse x as it is, pi by 2 as it is secant inverse x written. Now minus of secant inverse x will become plus. So it becomes secant inverse x plus cosecant inverse x is equal to pi by 2. Put it in a box and close the proof concept here only. Secant inverse x is equal to theta. I am repeating the proof again. Was assumed and then with the help of it and the interval and the domain knowledge I proved secant inverse x plus cosecant inverse x is equal to pi by 2.